Welcome to the session of Leadership Summit organized by the University of South Florida. My name is Erdogan Koç. I'm a professor of services management and marketing at Bahçeşehir University, Istanbul, Turkey. The title of this session is If Your People Compete, You Can Forget About Cooperation. In this session, we will talk about competition and cooperation in, in this session. Cooperation is an important leadership skill. Uh, it is one of the important skills identified in the World Economic Forum Future of Jobs report. Okay, uh, the word compete. First of all, let's talk about why uh, people compete. Uh, the word compete comes from the Latin word competere to mean come together or befit. Actually, uh, uh, the single most basic and fundamental purpose of life for all of us is self-survival. So, uh, actually, the, the self-survival is the driving force behind competition. Because we believe that if we are better than the others, then we can have access to resources so that, uh, that uh, we could survive. Okay, so... Uh, the belief being better than others can help us ensure our survival and satisfy our all other subordinate needs. That's why we have competition. That's why we compete with others. However, that is not the case because if uh, you are uh, living in, uh, on a savanna, you see that you can't survive on your own. You need others to support you. So, uh, when the agrarian society started, people realized that they had the support of the others. So uh, the need for socialization developed. That's why we have socialization uh, need, uh, the need for belonging, love and affection. That's why we enjoy it. During social relationships, uh, we uh, secrete uh, the oxytocin hormone in the brain this is known to be the hormone for happiness trust belonging and fidelity actually when we look at the uh, the famous uh, maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs model you can see that two of the needs there are in conflict these are the social needs and the prestige needs social needs drive us to become similar to other people. We want to be similar like the others. So like a sheep in the herds, okay? So uh, we try to be similar to the others. But at the same time, we have the need for prestige and status, one level up, okay? And these needs drive us to be different from the flock, to be better than the others. So we compete with others. So imagine three girls uh, at a high school, at a university, they like each other very much, they go to cinema together, um, they do all sorts of uh, socializations together, but when one of them gets her hair done like the other one, the other one doesn't like it because she wants to be different. Okay, that's why we have this a prestige need, uh, the need for uh, to become different from the others. Okay, that's why we compete. Okay, uh, imagine um, or think about uh, when you eat with other people, your friends and relatives, you tend to enjoy more food. Well, when you look at the anthropological uh, background of it, we see that people do that because of competition. In the primitive ages, people had to devour their food because uh, they had to compete with other people at the same time. But now we know that survival requires socialization and cooperation. On your own, you're nothing in the nature. You need the support of the others. That's why uh, human beings started uh, forming, establishing colonies, uh, especially around the agrarian time, uh, uh, about eight to 
10,000 years uh, before our time. Right. So, uh, according to research, when people are shown uh, horror films, they tend to stick to the others, okay? Uh, they tend to prefer or enjoy watching commercials that contain crowds of people and they enjoy taking part in group activities because they are scared, they thought that their survival was at risk, they were threatened. Even today's modern world, a recent piece of research, and there are many others supporting this fact, uh, people need others. People without social relationship and people who are lonely, their life expectancy tend to be quite shorter, relatively shorter than the others. Right. When we look at businesses, business functions are uh, integrated to one another. Especially, this is especially the case in services. So think about a restaurant, okay? Uh, the chef is excellent but the waiter is rude, slow, and careless. Well, the overall satisfaction will be low. And think about the vice versa. The uh, waiter is excellent and the chef is uh, not so good. So we say that in services, by the way, let me tell you this, um, a significant proportion of uh, GDPs in most countries, for instance in the US, uh, about 80% of the gross domestic product is produced in services. In many developed countries that is the case, okay? So services are becoming important. No matter what you do, you are almost in services. Uh, so when we say services, tourism, health, education, uh, uh, transportation and things like that, education and things like that, okay? So the quality of the service, in services we say that, the quality of the service received by external customers cannot be higher than the quality of the service received by the internal customers. That requires cooperation. So you can't just smile at your customers while having a trouble with your cohorts, okay? So you need the support of them. So you can't have this by competing with one another. Right. Uh, imagine, uh, you, you know, that there's a football match. You look at a football team. There's a goalkeeper and a substitute goalkeeper who is on the bench. Let's think that it is the fifth match of the season. The same goalkeeper is on the field on the ground and the same substitute goalkeeper is on the bench. No matter how good that uh, substitute goalkeeper is, after a while he will feel or she will feel that, you know, to be left out if there is competition in that team, okay? So he or she will start thinking that, hoping that, uh, the goalkeeper uh, concedes maybe five goals or the actual goalkeeper on the field breaks his leg or things like that. Even uh, things like, uh, for instance, if he knows that although the goalkeeper on the ground is better than him, he may know a few tricks better than the goalkeeper. Would he teach them to that person? No. If there is competition, he or she would not cooperate with that person. So that's the damage uh, competition does uh, to you, okay? So don't get your people, don't get your children compete with one another because they will not cooperate uh, with each other. Okay, so this um, slide shows you uh, about uh, competition. There are two rules for success. As you can see, only one rule. Never reveal everything you know, okay? That's the only rule because the name of the game is competition. But that is a mistake. Okay, when people, on the other hand, work together, they may produce more. When we say more, both quantity and quality-wise. 
we call this synergy, i.e. 2 plus 2 equals to 5 effect. This is why organizations pour lots of money into teamwork training. Actually, that is the, uh, uh, you know, most frequently resorted training. That is the most frequently used training. Companies buy mostly uh, teamwork training because teamwork makes a lot of uh, difference. Okay. So uh, how does it work? Teamwork does not happen just like that. You need effort uh, for it to occur. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard about the British rock group, the Rolling Stones. They played for over 50 years. They are a legendary group. However, still uh, in April uh, and June uh, 2019, they had a, a, you know, USA tour. For that tour, they had to re rehearse for two months, eight hours per day. So uh, that tic-tac, that working, that synergy will not happen like that. So you need practice for uh, that to take place. Okay, so when you compare your children, employees and people, they'll forget about cooperation. They will not support each other. They will not help each other. They will not help each other to develop. They'll start competing and they will probably feel revenge, aggression for the others. AT&T, American uh, Telecommunications Company, uh, in that company, if a successful company, uh, sorry, employee uh, becomes successful, if an employee becomes successful, he can't or she can't get his or her reward. He has to wait. He has to or she has to help another one, somebody below average, give him or her his hand to lift him or her up, i.e. to mentor that person. That means that in that organization, individual competition is not allowed. You cannot compete with others. You have to help others. You can be successful only together. You need to, to cooperate. Right. I'm sure you've heard about Stephen Covey, uh, personal development books. Uh, he's written many of them. Uh, probably the most famous one is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I'd highly recommend that book. Uh, there are many editions of that book out. In the book, uh, Stephen Covey uh, tells a story. One of his friends calls him to invite to a company event. He says that uh, we meet somewhere in the south for three days at a hotel. Three people, the best salesmen, number one, two, and three, get their rewards. We have talks, dinners, uh, fun, etc. The moment Stephen Covey hears about this uh, strategy, he says that don't don't do that because it's wrong. The friend of Stephen, Stephen Covey cannot understand what he means because he says that. Well, we've been doing this for over years, and every year our growth rate is much higher than the industry average. How come, uh, Stephen? What's wrong with our system? Well, Stephen Covey explains. He says that, well, when you give three people the rewards, how about the 497 other salesmen? What do they think? They don't get a reward? How do they feel? How do they feel about their organizations? Uh, would they cooperate? Would they have commitment for their companies? This time, uh, Stephen Covey's friend asks, well, what should we do then? Well, he advises them to have individual goals and for the individual goals, people can cooperate with each other freely. And the following year, instead of only three people getting the rewards, this time 430 or so people get rewards. Well, you say that in that individual system, of course, that would happen. But there's another 
fruit of its strategy, the following year, the profitability of the company increases by 10%, which is not a uh, simple thing. It is quite hard to increase profitability by 10% in a year. So don't get people, uh, you don't get your people compete with one another. According to a report uh, produced by Gallup, uh, having committed teams increased profitability by 21%. Employee absenteeism, 41%. And turnover tends to be 59% lower in those committed teams. Employees who could get their voices heard at work are almost five times more likely to do their best. Also, uh, managers are responsible for ensuring teamwork. Managers can't say that it's not my responsibility. They have to be involved in establishing teamwork, establishing the cooperation, preventing competition in the company. In businesses where teamwork is supported, sales uh, tend to be 19% higher and customer loyalty tend, uh, tends to be 7% higher, respectively. So the support of teamwork pays because uh, appropriate, uh, appropriate feedback increases job satisfaction by 80%. According to a researcher, Sigroy, happy employees tend to perform at least 20% better at work. Actually, just half an hour ago, I uh, shared uh, something on Instagram, happy people produce more. Uh, there are other research studies on that. Okay, why do we have teams? Teams cooperate and they have synergies, i.e. two plus two, they come together and they become five. Like what? Let's say two companies are merging. One, let's say they are in the business of soft drinks. One of them is uh, has got a good uh, uh, product range and the other one has got a good uh, distribution system. Normally, let's say each of them has got 20% market share. But when they come together, we expect more than 40% market share because they are joining their forces together. But if you do not manage this process well, your uh, uh, market share may be as low as uh, 30%. Is in the case of American Online and Times Warner um, um, company merger. Okay, so so why do we have uh, teamwork? Because efficient and effic effective distribution of work. You can't uh, distribute work to individuals. It is easier to distribute to individuals. Uh, better control, better decision making. Why better decision making? Making because if more people are involved, if they uh, uh, express their opinions, decisions will be much better than uh, individual decisions. Better coordination, so many fruits there are uh, when you have uh, teams in your organization. So what is important about, uh, what do we need to have to have an effective team? According to Shahta's group performance model, according to their research, the groups which have high level of cohesiveness and if they are given positive induction, i.e. positive communication, they tend to perform the best. On the other hand, if highly cohesive groups are given negative induction, then they produce the lowest. Why? Because they are angry with you, they take revenge their cohesiveness is high, you treat them, to them badly. You communicated with them in a negative manner. Okay, another piece of research, as I said, Jung and Beeman et al., uh, 2014 research, young uh, people uh, who are in good mood tend to be 20% uh, more successful in solving problems. So let's get our people happy you can't have happy people in a competing environment let's get them uh, cooperate okay i'm sure some of you may have heard about the p 
Pygmalion effect or the Rosenthal effect. Uh, uh, it takes place in a California elementary school. They are given a disguised IQ test. Okay. L and later they identify uh, so, some of the students a high, as high performers. Later, these students, although they are not, they have got a high level of IQ, they really, actually, they tend to perform better in the test. Why? Because teachers' attitudes towards these students have changed. They help them more. They have shown more interest in these students, okay? Why? Because they have looked at them positively. Look at your employees look at your children in a more positive manner there's nothing wrong with that right so pygmalion effect is about uh, our beliefs of other people and if they are positive we can uh, create more and better actually and when you make people believe that they are really good when you can convince yourself uh, you are really good let's say i'm a good lecturer then uh, i do better if i believe that these students are better then the outcome is really really different actually there are videos like that uh, like this one you may view on youtube okay so uh, two people are blindfolded first a lady normally she can't uh you know play very well basketball okay but when her eyes are blindfolded uh, they give her support although she misses the uh, shot they say well done excellent that was good and uh, later she actually performs better than the average but then a better performer comes he his shots are really good but when he has got his eyes blindfolded they say, oh, no, and things like that. He begins to perform worse, okay? So positivity has got really power on us. And positivity arises in cooperating organizations, not in competing organizations. Because if you are competing, I don't want anything good about you. I want you to be uh, a failure. Whereas if we are cooperating, I want you to be good. Okay, power of positive communication. I'm sure some of you may have heard about uh, Thomas Alva Edison, great inventor of our uh, time while we are still uh, using some of the, many of the inventions he has developed. So one day he, when he was at school, in the primary school, uh, his teacher, well, some uh, sources say that his headmaster gives him a letter and uh, says him that, uh, look, Thomas, take this letter home. Don't open it up yourself at home. Let your mother read it loud to you. So uh, Thomas does that when his mother opens the letter and starts reading. Uh, tears come down her eyes and she reads uh madam your son is a genius this school is too small incapable for him uh so we can't develop him enough please uh teach him yourself take him from our school okay after many years edison's mother dies he's now a world-renowned um uh, inventor uh, when he's in his mother's house in one of the drawers he finds this letter he opens up the letter and he sees madam your son is adult meaning mentally ill we won't let him come to school anymore so the positivity of the mother edison cried for hours and then he wrote in his diary thomas alva edison was an adult child that, by a hero mother, became the genius of the century. So this is the power of positivity. Okay, a while ago we said that uh, cohesiveness uh, was uh, really important for the group. 
Uh, so how do we develop cohesiveness in a team? Certain factors increase cohesiveness. Certain factors decrease cohesiveness. One of them, one of the increasing factors is the consensus, consensus over group roles. What does that mean? If they don't allow me express my opinions about the group goals, then I would not bother about the group goals. Why should I bother? They haven't asked me. I have no input in it. In the primary schools in Turkey and in many other countries, they do this. They ask students in the first uh, few days of the school, children, let's get the school rules established. So who would like to contribute? Do you think the teachers are morons and they're trying to get information from the students? No, they're trying to get their participation. If a student over there tells the teacher that, mm, teacher, let's not do this in the class, then he or she will own that rule. And that's why we need consensus. That's, not, that's, that's why we need participation of people. Participation increases ownership. On the other hand, if there is a lack of consensus over group goals, then uh, the cohesiveness will go down. Another thing is that uh, the uh, frequency of interaction. Okay, so in smaller groups, uh, the frequency of interaction is higher. So in a family, frequency of interaction is higher. You see your uh, mother, father, or children, uh, or brother, sister, more often. Okay, and usually these groups cohesiveness. Of course, there are families who can't get on. Uh, well, uh, the members, but uh, normally it is your family who would do the most for you, okay? But when the groups expand, get larger in terms of the numbers of people in the group, uh, then the frequency of interaction goes down and also the uh, group cohesiveness would go down. So what is the recommendation? Don't have large groups because uh, frequency of interaction among the members of the group is important. Also, personal attractivity. When we say personal attractivity, physical or social attractivity. So if you feel that uh, when you see a group member, if you feel happy to be with him or her, um, if you like chatting with him or her, then this will increase group cohesiveness. But if you're saying that, oh, there he comes and whatever, then uh, that means there's no personal attractivity among the uh, group members, then uh, it will contribute towards uh, the decreasing of the group cohesiveness. Another thing is that, uh, which decreases uh, group cohesiveness, is the unpleasant experiences. What sort of unpleasant experiences do we have? Such as failure, feeling of embarrassment or shame. Uh, think about groups. When did they disperse? Usually after a failure. So a manager's responsibility is that to hold the group together even after a failure. It is your responsibility. Imagine you are on a motorway you're driving and you have to slam on the brakes because something is happening in the front cars, okay? Something happening. Your immediate reaction would be to change the lane. Why? As if the lane is doing it to you. This is the same with groups. If there is something unpleasant, not nice, just distance yourself uh, from the group. So manage failures unpleasant experiences better so that a uh, group is not dispersed. Another thing is that, which is uh, related to the main topic of today, competition. If you compete with other people, outsiders, then the inside would be more cohesive. You cling to one another, okay? Think about countries 
they try uh, before the elections they try to uh, create problems with other countries what happens uh, solidarity increases within the country they do it uh, just for the votes may maybe in some countries on the other hand if there is competition in the group just like the football team then group cohesiveness uh, will be really low so if i am the uh, goalkeeper on the bench in and if i know certain things better than the goalkeeper on the ground i would not teach him or her because it is the uh you know the the fittest will survive why should i let him or her win so don't create that kind of an environment okay somebody called to muzaffer sherif uh he uh developed professor muzaffer sherif developed a theory called realistic group conflict theory he took two groups of students to uh robbers cave national park uh, in oklahoma 12 members and he saw that when there was competition there was hostility among the groups okay so uh, on purpose one day uh, uh, the uh, water tank had a problem he, they made a, on purpose he, he made a you know he caused a problem with the water tank uh, he pricked it okay and he saw that they came together why because they have got a superordinate goal what does that mean okay so they have got problems but there is a more important problem now if they haven't got water they can't wash their faces they can't brush their teeth they need water and for that they should work together so whenever you see competing people whenever see your children arguing give them a uh, reason we call it superordinate goal tell them that for instance if your uh, if your children are arguing well uh, how about going to cinema if you are quiet today okay if you are not arguing with one another okay for instance research shows that in certain hospitals uh intensive care units are the places where people have got the least level of conflict why because in the intensive care units people get paid more okay and they don't want to uh you know uh distort the game okay they want to play along because they have got a superordinate goal earning more money well that's doubtful why should it be a superordinate goal but that's why that's what people go after um, um, quite often right okay uh, when there are groups in competition they feel uh, a perceived scarcity of resources such as money we should have it all political power and military protection or social statuses okay right okay when you are in conflict with someone uh what happens okay you got differences of opinion but uh you should be able to learn from it and you should compromise come to a point okay there are three uh strategies in situations of uh conflict one of them is lose lose what does that mean lose lose uh I want you to lose and I accept to lose if you lose. So to, to make you a failure, uh, I'm willing to become a failure, okay? Uh, they um, talk about an anecdote, a couple, they, they don't get on well and in the end they divorce and the court decides all the uh, family fortune to be split up equally into two parts and uh, the lady the uh, wife is happy because 
she has been able to do divorce from this horrible man uh, she goes on a holiday immediately and at that moment the man sells the house for one dollar the house uh, the car for one dollar and when she comes back gives her two dollars well usually uh, this is a horrible strategy but then you are in conflict when there is hatred hostility competition uh, that may happen so once I was actually um, doing consultancy for a textile company and in that textile company production and design are in severe conflict before I arrived so uh, uh, the production team was jealous of the design team because they were more comfortable living in uh, or uh, you know working in more comfortable places and uh, getting higher salaries so once the design department made a mistake uh, like what uh, for instance the arm of the shirt was designed from here that's a mistake but the production team immediately started uh, and produced it why to show the upper management look they have made a mistake but at the same time they lost it too they have been questioned as well why have you don't done such a silly mistake why have you caused us uh, you know so much loss okay this is lose lose where does it happen in teams where you have competition in teams where you have competition you have hostility among uh, members the other one is win lose strategy uh, usually supervisors subordinate relationships line and staff confrontations union and management relationships and also countries in conflict they they uh, take uh, up this strategy we have to win and the others should lose but when you look at the problem like that what happens uh, in the end both sides uh, may spend a lot of money for instance two neighboring countries uh, each of them must spend so much on uh, you know uh, arms uh, their economies are not good so if they have peace then they don't have to spend so much money on arms and the uh, standard of living would be higher in both countries okay actually they are both losing because they have to buy so many jets fighter jets so many uh, uh, other stuff uh, so as to be able to uh, scare the other country okay we have a game actually uh, when I am with, with a group of people I ask them to be in a position like that with the person next to them and I tell them uh, uh, whenever one arm touches this side I'll give you one dollar and this uh, this side the other one gets one dollar immediately they get into the arm wrestling uh, position and they force each other well the instructions are not like that so clever people do this and each time a hand touches on the table they win okay because why do they do it because they think that for me to win somebody has to lose no that's not the case you can win together right and that's why we we want win-win okay uh think about the formula one teams you know they've got pit stop uh they've got changing tires and sometimes uh, not now apparently refueling the whole process is six seconds in a narrow place so many people 20 or so people they've got they have to play a teamwork they have to uh, cooperate they have to communicate well with each other in a rather dangerous and what, what, what do you mean by dangerous dangerous in terms of accidents and things like that and also the threat of loss one person making a mistake the whole team may lose okay so we uh, uh, recommend to you a win-win strategy win-win strategy can take place in 
uh, what sort of uh, environments in cooperative environments, not in competing environments. Well, thank you for viewing my presentation. Thank you so much. I wish you well.